Get up. What? What is wrong? Nothing's wrong. Nothing at all. What are you doing? Something I should have done a long time ago. Get your bag. Is this it? I don't understand. I ain't gonna kill you, though I probably should. You disgust me. And you shame us. If we could be shamed any more than we already are, that should do. Go! I don't understand you. What are you doing? Go and get a job! You know, they, they say the sick delude themselves. I was your friend. You and me, we ain't decent. But those folk, they was. Now here, take that. Take that and get lost. I'm leaving. If your brother becomes poor and cannot maintain himself with you, <laughs> you shall support him as though he were a stranger and a sojourner, and he shall live with you. Take no interest from him or profit, but fear your God that your brother may live beside you. You shall not lend him your money at interest, nor give him your food for profit. That was a reading from a little book called The Bible, gentlemen. <laughs> My favorite book. And today we're with one of our with, we're with friend of the show Sean McCarthy. Hey, thank you. Good hey, to be welcome, back. Welcome to the show. Good to be back. Hello. Yeah, and we're talking all about money lenders, the people that Jesus kicked out of the <laughs> temple and said, "Get the fuck out of my father's house, <laughs> you fucking slime balls." That with that clip we played was from uh, Red Dead Redemption Two, when Arthur throws the money lender out of the camp, kind of like what Jesus did. And <laughs> I'm glad we have Sean here because Sean's going to kind of break this stuff down for us because I feel like, you know, uh, we want to talk about this episode. We want to we talk about the housing crisis, which is an episode we wanted to do for a long time. And then uh, we're going to talk about some other money lending activities. But I feel like, Sean, I understand almost every other type of business. I understand, you know, trucking. I understand the restaurant business, you know, to an extent. But this money lending stuff, you start reading about it. There's all these terms. It's very confusing. Right. It's probably confusing on, on purpose. Oh, absolutely. And it's probably made to be exhausting and hard for people to understand. Right. Well, I mean, like, and I guess with payday lending, it's kind of simple enough where it's like, it's just like any mafia loan sharking thing. But essentially, yeah. you have the state to back you up when you're like getting 300% interest from whatever poor person. Now you have like... It's legal for you to like get a collections agency to harass them and fuck up their credit and make sure they can only live in shitty tenements and yeah. you know just kind of like make their lives miserable. Take their car. Right. Yeah. And it's it's just one of those things where it's like, you know, if we're going to talk about payday lending, what we'll get to is essentially they actually don't want you to pay them back. Right. Because if you say borrow $300 and you give them 360 back, well that's I mean it's not that great, yeah. but if you owe them money for the rest of their li your life, suddenly it's like you have an extra phone bill. You know, yeah. they're not even providing you with anything, you right. know, a phone or whatever, but you're paying them money every month. It's just pure profit like a fucking yeah. thrift right. store. Right. <laughs> <laughs> you know? Everybody who owns a thrift store is a bad person, too, because there's no overhead. <laughs> and the one on Flushing Avenue didn't accept my donation. That fucking pissed me off. They were like, we don't take donations. I was like, then wh where do you get your inventory from? I've been, like, trying to get mm. rid of, like, clothes and stuff, you know, partly because of, what, tidying up with Marie or whatever. But, yeah, yeah, yeah. But, like, uh, well, so apparently, one, like, a lot of donation places are overflowing now. But, two, yeah. like, I, I, I heard that, like, a lot of you, you'll see in, in Brooklyn, New York, like, the, the donation boxes or the trucks or whatever, yeah. a lot of those are actually just scams. I mean, it's not really. That's what I heard, yeah. Yeah, because oh, they'll just it? take the clothes and resell them. Yeah. Which it's like, it's kind of fine because I'm trying to get rid of it anyways, uh -huh. but it's like, you like in your head the idea that like, oh, I'm I'm, I'm keeping somebody warm in the winter, yeah. Yeah. not just some fucking hustler right. in a track Your, your coat drive <laughs> goes so straight much, to you're, some... Yeah, you're so much better just taking your clothes and throwing them out the window. <laughs> <laughs> just like putting a box in yeah. a project or something. Yeah. yeah. One time, Make a quilt and then give that to a homeless person. Yeah. One, one time I, I went on like, so there's like a website, like a New York City official thing where you can find like official donors. And I found like a church in like East New York, you mm -hmm. know, like 
the bad part of East New York, essentially. Yeah. And it's like, I've only ever walked there through the day, but it's fucking eerie. Yeah. You know, and, and this is like right at the end of the L train. Yeah. So, you know, it's always a contrast. You go from like uh, um, uh, Williamsburg all the way down to like what <laughs> essentially looks like there was a war there. Yeah, yeah. Because you walk around during the day and it's like a ghost town. You see like a couple people who are like clearly on methadone or whatever yeah. else. I mean, there'll be it, cupcake shops there eventually. <laughs> <laughs> But, you know, it's it's so you get this very eerie sense walking around. And one time I went there and I like brought like a couple shopping bags worth of clothes. And then I like knocked on a church and like some guy opened and I like gave him the clothes. And then he like shut the door very hurriedly. And I like I felt good about that. I was mm -hmm. like, oh, yeah, yeah I yeah. brought the clothes directly to where they were most needed. Right. Yeah, he had yeah. to get but, back to molesting children. <laughs> he was actually giving the clothes to kids that he was. Yeah. yeah. Well, they, they all fit in Sean's clothes right. somehow. He's like, well, get, out, get out of here. Get out of here. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> well, it's hard for Deb to donate clothes because she, she doesn't. She, it's hard to find extra large homeless women. <laughs> <laughs> Got that bitch. Yeah. You fat ass. Um, I, don't, I don't like you talking about Deb like that oh thanks all right good <laughs> i'm sorry edit it out <laughs> um so yeah we want to we want to start this episode talking about um the housing crisis so sean sent me a couple articles and it seems like basically what happened was well i don't know it's, it's like i almost need you to like walk me through it because it's right it's, i mean the language is is uh confusing mm -hmm. and um I'm 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 having to look up word like like yeah, lo yeah, yeah. loan forgiveness. I don't even know what that is. Right. So why don't you? I mean, in your best, in, yeah. In, give us the starting place. Give us kind of like yeah, where the <laughs> right. Where the well, yeah, and like just to begin, like it's like you said, it's deliberately complicated on purpose. Mm -hmm. And like I even got that sense. So it's like most of my knowledge about what happened came from this book, Chain of Title, by this great journalist named David Dayan. But I was even rereading it on the way over here, and I was like. What the fuck? I don't what what is, you know, so it's like I got this sense yeah. like you feel like an idiot like I've had this sense recently like my brain is deteriorating and I'm just forgetting stuff, yeah, but yeah, it's yeah. but it's just very complicated, but right. like you know, fundamentally, the fundamentals are simple. So mm -hmm. you you start there. It's like if you want to get a mortgage to get a home, yeah. you have what's called the uh the deed, which is like the deed is I own this property, then you have the mortgage note, which is like I've taken a loan, so this person has a claim to the property in mm -hmm. event in the event that I don't pay my loan back. Right. So, essentially, what we're talking about with the the foreclosure this crisis, makes you want to build a tiny house in the woods, <laughs> doesn't it? <laughs> this makes you want to be one of those women who like <laughs> has her dog <laughs> in her house attached to a truck. <laughs> yeah. yeah. The or like wide. the other one is like shipping containers. They were talking about like yeah, building yeah. shit with shipping containers oh, in the yeah. Bronx. Yeah, 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 and making it chic and stuff. That does sound nice. Like you just fucking write manifestos and live in a yeah, shipping yeah, container. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Actually, that does sound. <laughs> I gotta tell mail you. bombs to universities. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's the life. Yeah. I got to tell you one time one time I was doing a moving job and I like walked past this unit and there was a there was a guy the, the unit door was open and there was a guy just like sitting in there in a tank top and jeans like reading the newspaper and I was like this that that guy rules. <laughs> I was like walking around for my uh, uh, day job I had once and there was just like this old Japanese man in the park. He must have been 80s, 90s. Mm -hmm. Just sitting there reading the newspaper, listening to like this uh, meditative music and smoking a cigarette. Yeah. And I don't know. There was something about that that was just so peaceful. I yeah. was like, I, yeah, I don't even know how to describe it. But you do like see those people as you go about and you're like, mm -hmm. that is what I, I want to be 80 years old Japanese and, yeah. Yeah. with <laughs> my regular cigarette and paper ritual. Yeah, you know? yeah. <laughs> Do you think part of the housing problem is that that uh, women won't fuck you unless you have a house because they're, <laughs> because they're shallow cunts? <laughs> so if women would just start fucking guys who lived in a shipping container, you know, with the, they wouldn't the bangers wouldn't have such, have such a stranglehold on us. I don't need this. I don't need this nice of a place. Right. Right. <laughs> yeah. I mean, that's been like what going back to the Greeks, the idea of like a pussy strike and that'll fr fix all the problems in the world. Yeah. Because, you know. I mean, it is kind of a question of like who's to blame. If men mm -hmm. do shitty shit because they want women, mm -hmm. is it women's fault or is it men's fault for right. cheapening our much higher moral standards <laughs> yeah, than yeah, they yeah. have? Yeah. <laughs> Stop acting like your pussy is so special <laughs> and blow me in this storage unit. <laughs> you fucking who do you think you are? <laughs> Come on, it's, ha it's the only it's the only way we fight the bankers if we all start fucking in at, at Cube Smart. 
<laughs> oh, <laughs> Occupy man. the pussy. Yeah. yeah. Can't wait to see some like fun blog start up about how like this man shook up a billion dollar industry by moving into Cube Smart. <laughs> Yeah, kind moving of moving his girlfriend in. if you can rent a storage unit you can buy one right, right. Yeah. Um, why not god damn it i wanted i really <laughs> wanted I really maybe not a tiny house but i really i want to do that i did get a book of tiny houses because they are like aesthetically kind of pleasing too and it's like mm-hmm. the idea of like you get all your shit into like one little small thing mm-hmm. and yeah you know i mean it does it feels stressful to have too much stuff everything yeah, sparks know? joy yeah yeah I, I get rid of shit all the time. I, th- I feel like I'm throwing stuff out every day. And then every day new, but, but then every sometimes day new, you need it. Yeah. <laughs> no, but then every day a new Amazon package just comes in. Mm-hmm. And I'm like, I'm going to kill you and the dogs <laughs> if one more fucking box comes in this apartment. <laughs> God damn it. Um, anyway, so, okay, we but were yeah, talking yeah. about... Like, so, you know, you have the deed and the note, mm-hmm. or the mortgage note. And okay. so, like, when you when you think about the two... So the person who, yes. who takes out the mortgage, they, they kind of just have the mortgage note. Right. Yeah. Yeah, the, or the bank that lends you has the the note, mm-hmm. uh, and so this is what the podcast should be—just people explaining stuff. We're wearing too many hats. Yeah. yeah. Well, Go it's ahead. yeah, and so like when you think about the two thousand eight financial crisis, essentially like um, because this entire industry of mortgage backed securities popped up where they needed mortgages to get repackaged into these securities and be sold. Mm -hmm. So all these people, you know, got mortgages when they probably shouldn't have, there was a lot of fraud into that. Yeah. And so what happens after 2008 is that, um, suddenly like in Florida, the value of homes falls by like 50%, you know? Okay. So it used to be like, if you, that's because too many people had mortgages. Well, it's, it's too many people that couldn't afford them, right? Well, th- there's that aspect to it, but it was like there was a lot of predatory stuff going on where like uh, you know, like uh the comedian we know what Andrew Collins, he was he was doing this shit in Florida. I don't know uh-huh. if Tim Dillon was too. Yeah. <laughs> but uh <laughs> he might have been. <laughs> <laughs> But like essentially what you can do is like there'd be these ninja loans, no income, no job, no assets loans, Mm -hmm. where you essentially go to somebody and because the market's so hot and the banks are so in demand of mortgages to put in these securities, you just say, hey, look, you'll get a two, three hundred, whatever thousand dollar loan, even if you don't have a job or even if you can't repay. And in some cases, people were uh, very dishonest where they would say, hey, just write your income as 100000 here or, mm-hmm. or do whatever the fuck it takes to get this thing approved mm-hmm. because at the end of the day, nobody gives a shit because you're just selling it to the next person. You know, right. the, origina- the mortgage originators sell it to the banks, the banks put it in a security, the securities are sold to pension funds or whoever the fuck. Mm-hmm. And so everybody's just trying to get rid of these things so they don't give a shit if, if the actual person can repay. Yeah. You know? Yeah. And so that blows up. And right. then what happens? It's ha- so fucking sneaky and complicated. Right. I mean, it's like, that's why Elizabeth Warren's probably not going to win because it seems like she's pretty, I mean, she's good at like, you know, financial stuff, like financial <laughs> justice, but that's not like exciting to anybody. <laughs> I want free, <laughs> I want my free, my free shit. <laughs> I don't know. It's always like we're gonna we're gonna have uh, penalties against the CEOs of banks that, uh, and you're like, this is a tweet, and I'm exhausted. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> you know, you I are mean, sneak. <laughs> yeah, like I, I think the only way she's gonna beat Bernie is if she actually comes out and be like, yeah, we're we're just gonna have to kill these people. Because <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> you know she's like kind of. I mean, look, be honest. She's kind of trill and annoying. Like I think she's great on Wall Street, and I know that's yeah, that, yeah. that's gonna be the. The think piece article is she's going to lose and everybody's going to say, oh, she's a woman. People dismissed Mm -hmm. her as shrill or whatever else. Mm -hmm. But like the reality is for like authenticity, people already have Bernie. And it's like if you have the same policies as Bernie, why would anybody go from the guy they trust? Yeah. yeah. So Warren is going to have the rap or something. She she would have to go to (laughs) to his left and say like, oh, let's just nationalize all these banks. And like the government's going to give you two thousand dollars UBI or just Mm -hmm. like that kind of stuff, as Mm -hmm. opposed to these like wonky policy papers. Right. And then once you once you nationalize these banks, I mean, I'm guessing what you have to do is you have to kill all the people who run them. Right. And and then do you have to kill their families, too? Because you don't (laughs) want them getting revenge. You know, it's like I, I'm sorry that you're nine, but it's like you're going to grow up eventually. So it's like it's not personal. And you just put him in front of a firing squad. You're like, your dad was a bad person. We're trying to fix, you know, fix the world. Yeah, that's what Lenin did. Yeah. He, he killed the uh, the Romanovs, the imperial family in Russia, because oh, like, right. yeah, there was a monarchy. And so like you had all these people trying to put the old system back in place. But for a monarchy, you need heirs. Yeah. So, of course, right. the kids, they got to die. 
And that's yeah, that's it, real socialism. <laughs> right, right, right. So he didn't want to kill the kids, but it was kind of like <laughs> he kind of had to. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. And they made a movie about they made a right. kids movie about it. Yeah, they made a Anastasia, the yeah. Disney movie about yeah. she gets away from evil Lenin. Yeah. And we were talking on the podcast about like what if uh what what if Anastasia survives Lenin and then the Germans invade and the Einsatz group and kills her. <laughs> nice. <laughs> <laughs> That'd be a good sequel. Yeah, it's pretty funny. She's like, uh, "Yeah, I'm gonna go join my grandmother, who's the queen." Anyway, <laughs> look at all the jewels I have. Sorry, you gotta go. Um, but um, yeah, go ahead. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, and I mean, like, so to, to make the story as simple as possible, like 2008 comes. You know, uh, all these people start defaulting, so the the these mortgages blow up, and then the property values explode because nobody. You know, in the lead up to this, when there's all the demand, the prices mm -hmm. on the houses keep going up. Defaulting and up and up. is me, you say I can't pay it anymore, and yeah, you, you so, default, sort of give up the right, and mm -hmm. they repossess the house. Yeah, that's foreclosure. Yeah, and that okay. there's like a whole legal process there, which we'll get to. That's where mm -hmm. the fraud comes in. But okay. but so essentially, the the important thing is that housing prices stop going up and they start falling. Mm -hmm. And so what happens when housing prices start falling is a lot of people are what's called underwater. Mm -hmm. So say you borrowed say five hundred thousand for the house, and then it was at the time worth six hundred thousand, but now all of a sudden it's worth four hundred thousand. Mm -hmm. So you owe more on the house than it's actually worth. Okay. So all these people are underwater. All of a sudden they can't refinance. So yeah. like all these defaults start spreading, you know. Mm -hmm. And so all of these people are defaulting, and then like just from a policy point of view, you have a choice. And we, this actually happened before in the United States with the Great Depression. This is a, almost exact same thing happened, you know, less complicated securitization, but mm. a similar thing, where all these people had mortgages where that were uh, they owed more than what their property was worth. Mm. So the question is, how do you deal with that? So they owed more than what their property was worth. So like the the, the, the value of the house goes down and they owe... So does the does the monthly payment of your mortgage go up? It, it depends. Like if you're on a fixed rate, the the monthly payment doesn't change. Mm -hmm. But if you're on like an adjustable rate, a lot of people are on adjustable rates. Yeah, so yeah. you know that'll really fuck you over. Okay. But there's like, a great episode of King of Queens where like they're they're getting a <laughs> they're getting a loan, but at the, uh, Doug is a. Uh, uh, he was at work shooting staples into a tin can and he takes the staple gun and puts it under his leg and he spends pretty much the whole episode of King of Queens with a staple in his testicles. <laughs> so he's like going to the loan office with Carrie and he's got a staple in his nuts. And then like the, the lady's like explaining the lady explaining the load. She's like she's like, okay, so the first option is pretty standard. It's, uh, you know, at least you'll know what to expect every month. The second option, um, some days your monthly payment will be lower. Other months you'll have a sharp metal object in your testicles <laughs> that's a good show it was the, <laughs> it's was a, a great show. show i don't know why it, people like yeah i don't know it's i don't know why it's not up there with anyway sure you know you know who else kills the whole cast of everybody loves raymond they mm. destroy every every episode yeah and there's not many sitcoms that cover uh financial um you know like for housing, so, yeah, you know, yeah, 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 man. It'd be inconvenient for the banks for that kind of shit to be on there. Mm -hmm. yeah. That's why yeah. I'm stuck at open mics. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <Right>. <laughs> you're, you're that guy who's like, <laughs> you, guys, you don't even know what the fucking banks are doing to you guys. You guys just sit here with your, yeah, your Heinekens, <laughs> man. <laughs> why am I not? Why, why am I not on Comedy Central Digital? I'm funny, right? <laughs> it's like the fucking 10 years I've been doing stand-up distilled yeah. right there. Yeah. <laughs> no, that's not true. Yeah, I appreciate that. But, um, but yeah, so, I mean, like, essentially, you have this policy choice where all these people, you know, because uh, the other thing that happens is that a recession starts. So people mm -hmm. start getting kicked out of their jobs. For example, home construction, you know, mm -hmm. there's no more demand for homes. So mm -hmm. all these people who are working on building homes lose their jobs, mm -hmm. you know. Uh, and on and on the chain, you know, because they can't buy shit. So those people lose their jobs, et cetera, et cetera. Mm -hmm. So more people start defaulting. Mm -hmm. So all these people are defaulting on their loans, you know, even if they didn't buy during the bubble or whatever else. Right. So you have a policy choice. And the policy choice is either uh, the government steps in or you just have to like, well, either way, the government's going to have to step in. 
But either you let the banks foreclose on all these millions and millions of people. Mm-hmm. And now let me ask you this. Was yeah. it isolated to just like one area or was it pretty much throughout the country? It was throughout the country, but the four big states were Arizona, California, Nevada, and okay. Florida. And why did housing prices go down? It was essentially like... Um, uh, essentially just the bubble popped where bubble essentially bubble. like, you know, it's like any other thing where so many people, like, you know, the people always point out the flip this house shows and mm-hmm. stuff were all popping up where yeah. more and more people are just buying it only because they think the price will go up. It has nothing to do with the underlying value or whatever. Okay. So all sorts of people were just taking loans to buy it because they think the price will go up. Mm-hmm. And then eventually, you know, that chain pops. Mm-hmm. You know, eventually the prices stop going up for right, whatever right, reason. Right. And then the whole thing comes down. There was just an uptick uh, of um, siblings with sexual tension. <laughs> <laughs> they wanted to fix up homes. <laughs> I've, n- I've never watched that show. Yeah, no, that's just what I imagine it is. It's always probably like a brother and sister who, like, might, you know, are a little too comfortable. <laughs> anyway, yeah. Um, so, so then what? So, the policy choice is either the government gets involved or what you right. kind of like let the market regulate. Because, right. like, either way, the government has to get involved. But mm-hmm. the idea is essentially the two cases in the United States are the Great Depression and then the Obama administration. And what happens in the Great Depression is that uh, Franklin Roosevelt, the New Deal, they form what's called the Homeowners Loan Corporation. And this is just the government buys mortgages. Okay. Because that's a solution there, is that all these people owe more money than their house is worth. Mm -hmm. So maybe the government just buys their mortgage from them and says, okay, you pay the government and we'll renegotiate your payment to something you can actually pay, you know? Okay. Um, So now you're paying the government back. You you pay the government back, yeah. And so the other solution is to just let the banks foreclose. And that's okay. essentially what the Obama administration did. Okay. So that's yeah. that's pretty simple when you break it down like that. Right. Yeah. And, and you know, there's like a million acronyms, a million programs. Like the Obama administration did like HAMP, like mm-hmm. Homeowners Assistant Modification Program or whatever the fuck. <laughs> and this was basically the idea is like they would try to like give carrots to the, the banks or the mortgage servicers so that they would refinance these loans without... Mm-hmm having the government directly take them over. Mm-hmm. And so it's like, yeah, once you get into all these kinds of details, it does get more complicated than that. But right. at the end of the day, that's the fundamental sort of, story. Yeah. Yeah. Um, why do you think the Obama administration made that decision? I mean, do you think it was maybe campaign stuff or? Well. He went to one of yeah. their <laughs> sex parties. He's like, oh, this is a lot of fun. <laughs> I've never fucked a goat before. And uh <laughs> No, it's like yeah. that Bill Hicks bit. They showed him the real video of the JFK assassination, man. Yeah. <laughs> well, yeah. no, I, I think it's like um It's like those guys, like if you if you know all this stuff, why don't you get a gun and do something about it? Right. Just go to Park <laughs> Avenue and shoot somebody. Be a man instead of doing your little comedy routine. <laughs> That's like well, I was thinking I don't know. I don't know if you can even I'm not advocating this, but it's like, yeah, yeah, if you were in the mind state where you're like, yeah, I'm going to commit suicide. Well, it's like if you spend 10 minutes on Google, you could find a couple of people you could (laughs) take with you. (laughs) Exactly. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, You could you could write some social wrongs. Uh Right. 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 (laughs) Just follow the fucking uh, Park Avenue Twitter (laughs) accounts or something. Right. And this is this is a satire. (laughs) Satire. (laughs) We are 100 percent not just, liable for any. Just yeah. look for fucking speaking engagements <laughs> in Lower Manhattan. Mm-hmm. Right, right, right. But, but don't actually do that. No, don't do that. No, if you're gonna commit suicide, yeah. it's suicide by cop all the way. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. That's the only. Yeah, that's the and only way. Murder, suicide. That's the order. <laughs> yeah. Well, what, well, I mean, cops desperately want to shoot somebody anyway. So right. It's like you get to die, and they get to kill somebody, and everybody's happy. <laughs> <laughs> you know, the, you get, in the mark of any good scam, it's yeah, everybody's right, right, happy, right? And you you put blackface on so the cop doesn't feel as bad about it. <laughs> yeah, yeah. There we go. <laughs> um. Okay, so I'm just where, imagining where, where, the fucking police cam video of you getting shot to death and <laughs> ranting about the banks or some shit. Yeah, yeah. Oh, you hack. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Um okay so so that's so that's right. an interesting point. So the so uh yeah. I mean most people just kind of like 
I mean, I, I mean, wait, wait. Actually, though, yeah, sorry. Yeah, one thing I didn't yeah, say please. was this speculating on Obama's motivation. So yeah, it's yeah, like, yeah, that's what I want to ask you about. So, yeah, something they did say is uh, Obama's official campaign said that he's taken took in 2008 more money from Wall Street than any other candidate in history. Mm -hmm. And you know, I don't know. That's probably since been surpassed. Mm -hmm. But that was a factor. And then he appointed Tim Geithner as his Treasury Secretary. Larry Summers was a Clinton administration official who came in as an economic advisor. Mm -hmm. And these people. Like Tim Geithner, for his part, used the phrase uh, foaming the runways for the banks mm -hmm. so that they could foreclose. And the idea is like essentially, again, at the height of the Obama admin, they were doing more than a million of these foreclosures a year, which, again, okay. this is the you've defaulted. So now they have to kick you out of the home. They have to change the locks and then they have to resell the home or okay. whatever. It is. This is 2009, 10. Yeah, this is like all the way up until 2012 and even a bit after, okay. you know, but but that's kind of the, the peak of it is 2009. And now and the then, banks are benefiting from foreclosing because they've already like collected money that you've been paying to them. But now that they re they repossess the house, right. they can sell it again and make more money. So they just have this yeah. thing that they keep for they can right. continue to... Sorry, it's like when Tim Geithner says foaming the runway, the problem is when you want to like foreclose on a million people, it's like hard. So the banks can still lose money and because nobody's buying and all this shit. And then right. foreclosure has a weird thing where it's like if you evict somebody, it ruins a neighborhood. It drives down housing prices there. It's like, okay. you know, people will like break into the house and like smoke crack or whatever yeah. else because it's empty now, mm -hmm. you know. Oh, Deb so knows about that. <laughs> 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 Your first date. Yeah. <laughs> we broke into a house and smoked crack. Yeah. The, the house has like a, a fun story now. It's <laughs> yeah. like a family that used to live there. Yeah. But, uh, you know, so like people speculate, like Tim Geithner came up with like this homeowner modification program to like kind of drag out the process of foreclosure so it wouldn't all have to happen at once. So that the idea is like if the banks do it more slowly, their balance sheets can absorb all these foreclosures without devastating the banks. Wow, you know? that's mm. fucked up. Yeah, I mean, he's a piece of shit. Like, you know, yeah. we, we talk about payday lending later. He's, yeah, yeah, he's involved that. in that since he left the Obama admin. Yeah. It's, it's weird, because at least, like, when you're in the mafia and you want to hurt somebody or shake somebody <laughs> down, you have to, like, look them in the face. <laughs> <laughs> you, have yeah. to, you have to go to their bakery that they've that it's been their dream to work at forever, and mm -hmm. you go, and you go, ah, it's a beautiful little store. Oh, what are those... Uh, <laughs> Yeah, that's, is that Italian bread? My grandmother used to make that. And you have to like make them, you have to see the look on their face when you say, <laughs> give me $2,000 a week or I'll, I'll break your fucking arm. And I don't think, I would, I would, I would imagine that Tim Geithner never has to talk to any of these people. That right. Well, you know, I mean, you're, you're hitting on an essential point there where like essentially what we set up is you'll have these fucking nebbish pencil necks with like Excel spreadsheets or whatever other statistical modeling program sitting in fucking Manhattan. And then it's, you know, like those guys from the sheriff's department who actually go out and yeah. kick people out of their homes yeah, or, yeah, you yeah. know, harass them for whatever reason. Yeah. You know, so I was reading about that. So I guess when they foreclose on a house, traditionally the sheriff sheriff has to de has to deliver yeah, the yeah, letter yeah. but at the height of the you know housing crisis yeah they were doing so many they had to hire private contractors to do it creating jobs right. <laughs> yeah there right. was like uh, i think david david made the point it was one of the only growth industries yeah in in florida during the housing bust was like hiring people to go out and deliver these notices like hey get the fuck out of your house you yeah. know wow. Imagine if you moving don't. your family to Florida yeah. so you can, you can you find a great job <laughs> <laughs> just kicking people out of their homes um yeah. It's got to pay good. Mm -hmm. It's got to pay okay. But then but then I think there were incidents of like uh people felt so bad about it that they just kind of like they would just kind of like drop the letter. Yeah, they would just like throw it in the sewer or like letter. yeah, just pretend they delivered it when they didn't or yeah. you know whatever else. Yeah. And you know, and then of course like I mean, there's so much fucking fraud that goes on on like every part of the chain, but mm -hmm. like the other thing is like I think California law requires that you give them like, I don't know if it's 90 or 30 days or however long it is to like contest this shit. But then they would just like backdate it or say, oh, we delivered it 90 days ago or we delivered it 30 days ago. You know, so it's like people were just at all ends of the chain. There was mm -hmm. fraud, essentially, mm -hmm. uh, as to uh, these these foreclosures. Jeez. Um, yeah. I wanted, to say, I wanted to say something. I forget. I forget what it was. Uh fuck i had it it'll come back to you no i think Just write i, down I think i have i think is. i'm getting dementia <laughs> i think this is an early sign of dementia where you there's lulls in your podcast 
<laughs> I was like, you to be put down. My yeah. wife was at the dentist, and I was yeah. like sitting in the room with her, and they do the X-ray, you know, the mouth, yeah. and then both the doc, the dentists leave, and yeah. I'm still there in the room, and yeah. then I'm like, oh, I have brain cancer now, yeah. you know, and then like I like I was over here on the way forgetting, and you know, you start thinking like that's it that's yeah. fucking mm-hmm. brain cancer yeah, yeah yeah they're gonna have to like open a hole in my skull because i'm forgetting about fucking yeah. mortgage-backed securities and <laughs> other shit i read about a month ago yeah 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 we really are all gonna get it yeah, you didn't have any lead thing on or no Man. i read on the internet that it's like such a small radiation exposure okay but you know maybe they're part of the cover-up yeah. there's like there's all sorts of stuff like uh airplanes like when they leave the atmosphere yeah oh it's yeah, like yeah. if you're traveling all the time you're being exposed to a lot more radiation than anybody on earth yeah oh this is the point i wanted to make okay so i feel like when you do this kind of stuff when you foreclose on homes or like i kind of used to work for this uh sort of scam home improvement marketing company mm-hmm. and i feel like you have to i mean you do kind of have to like convince yourself that like it's okay what you're doing and do you think a lot of people are like a lot of people are sort of of the mindset of like, well, if somebody's dumb enough to fall for this, uh, I. But it seems like even people who were like making the payments on time and didn't miss anything were still somehow being foreclosed on. Right. Well, so that on that point, we can get into essentially what happened with chain of title and all this property law that got fucked up. Um, but in, as far as like people justify it, well. I mean, you can see kind of clearly what has happened where um, people will just say, oh, these people are bums, deadbeats, or, you know, or they're just arguing that the banks broke the law because they want a free house or whatever else. Mm-hmm. Right. And it's like you kind of see, I, I think the the two major crimes to happen in America in the 21st century are the opiate crisis uh, and the um, the foreclosure fraud epidemic. And in both of those cases, like a, a major way that the people who did the crime have been able to get away with it is blaming the victims being Mm -hmm. like, these are addicts. These are scumbags. They made a choice. They're, you know, toxic, whatever the fuck. Or, you know, in the case of foreclosure, it's, Oh, these are deadbeats. Right. They just didn't want to pay their bills. You know, they got a fucking second mortgage when they shouldn't have to put a porch on or whatever the fuck it may be. It's kind of easy when all your victims like wear billabong, you know, (laughs) there's like a, they have like tribal tattoos. <laughs> You're like, come on, folks, Your Honor, look at them. I mean, well, I mean, <laughs> they, but, all, they all have like those pa- those pants from their late two- early two thousands where like, they're real baggy with the chains on. They all have chain wallets. <laughs> but there's like, there's another weird speculation as to why Obama acted the way he did, and I don't know how true it is. But so there was this guy on CNBC, I think his name was Rick Centelli. I might be completely wrong on that. Mm. But it was this guy on CNBC and he does this viral rant in like, I think February 2009, okay. which people say started the Tea Party movement. Okay. But he was on CNBC and he's on the floor of the Chicago Stock Exchange or Mercantile. And he goes on this rant to the other traders. He's like, because Obama had announced some sort of relief, l- relief program for mortgages. Mm-hmm. And he starts yelling at the other traders, do you want to pay your neighbor's mortgages? Do you want to pay for some bum who got another uh, $200,000 line, no, line I don't. of credit? You know? <laughs> yeah. you know? And he goes on this whole rant and it goes like semi-viral. And like this was like uh, the idea was that there was any sort of popular groundswell of people being like, I don't want to pay for, for, you know, bums who like took out too much in, in home loans. And now they're just trying to get a free ride from their neighbors and, you know, moral hazard and all that stuff. Yeah. So it's like, I don't know how much of a factor it was, but you know, apparently some Obama administrations did officials did talk about that rant as like some crystallizing moment where they were like, let's not, have the government buy the mortgages because then that would like reward people for bad behavior. Mm-hmm. And I guess it's easy to think to think that when you're not sort of connected to the people who right. that shit's happening to, right? Yeah, no, exactly. Yeah. And it's also again, it, it's it's missing the wider picture because it's mm-hmm. like, of course, in any story, there's going to be like people who are just uh, gaming the system or whatever. Yeah. But once you have the actual bottom fall out of my cousin Bridget, <laughs> we don't talk to her. <laughs> <laughs> once once you have the actual uh, bottom fall out of the economy, then it's like even people who like got a perfectly sensible mortgage and like made all their payments, well, suddenly they're fired or out of a job. So yeah. it's like, what the fuck are they supposed to do? Right. Yeah. So th- should they lose their houses because the economy barreled out? You yeah, know? Yeah. 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 Man, it's really it's really like 
it's hard to like connect these dots and to see where it goes because you hear people like say stuff all the time like you know the bankers crash the economy or whatever mm-hmm. and it but it, until you really I don't know you don't really understand the whole thing until you really do a lot of a lot of research. I'm thinking of I, I forget the name I know they made a documentary about this but there was some CIA I uh-huh. think disinformation guy because it's really but easy it, to just like diddle yourself to Obama every <laughs> night because he's cute. <laughs> You know, if you don't know, like, what, because wasn't there a meeting where Obama was like, I'm keeping people from pitchforks? Yeah, yeah, he, he, told, to he told the bankers, I'm the only one keeping you away from the pitchforks. Nice. And then he, like, didn't use his leverage at all. Okay. Um, yeah. But, yeah, no, there's, like, a CIA guy who said his job is to create a hall of mirrors. I believe that's the phrase he used, hall of mirrors. And the idea is, like, essentially, you know, you put all this information out there so that if you want to like get to, you know, who the villains are or whatever, you know, you're chasing a hall of mirrors. So like you, you're going off on nine 11 truth, or you're like seeing this little part of the picture, but you're not seeing the whole elephant. But the idea is just like essentially exhaust people. So if you, you want to get the truth, there's just so many different things reflecting and connecting and it, it leads you in so many different paths that it's just hard to see what is actually going on, even though it can be, often quite simple when you just kind of lay when it you, out. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, right. right. Thank God for podcasts. Huh? <laughs> <laughs> I mean, you just throw it on a truck driving job and hopefully you learn, you know, you learn yeah. a little bit. <laughs> oh, yeah. Um, it seems like it would be tough to to riot in the city, too. You know, like, where do you find a pitchfork in the city? Mm-hmm. Well, yeah, I guess pitchforks are more rural. Things, but you can go to probably Home Depot has. <laughs> yeah. You can like, just excuse go me, sir. Do you have a hundred pitchforks? <laughs> Imagine, imagine going to Wall Street and just a, a, a mass, a mass pitchforking. <laughs> kind of have to. Um, anyway, I don't know. I also feel like maybe that's almost like a little hack to say, like, oh, we should, we should kill these bankers, right? But, uh, but that's the thing. Like, I don't know. I uh, within the last week, I started watching David Foster Wallace on YouTube, and mm-hmm. uh, I read like seven pages of his work, and mm-hmm. I know everybody knew about him decades ago mm-hmm. but something that he said that's that's the guy for white boys right <laughs> yes it's the guy that all the white boys love <laughs> that's the guy who <laughs> wrote long books because he wanted to put his dick on the table <laughs> in a real white man move and uh force people to to see his giant phallus mm-hmm. um but but yeah so essentially he was saying that like when you're like i guess sincere uh part he he uses the phrase irony is the um irony is the song of a bird that no that has come to accept its cage and he talks about like in american culture and you know through television is primarily what he talked about but when you speak sincerely you have a voice in the in your head that's mocking you that's being like ironic and detached and like, oh, dear. I guess the bankers are the fucking enemy. You know, mm-hmm. Bill Hicks, uh, right, Starbucks right, right, right. over here, asshole. Yeah. And so he kind of talks about how like uh, irony is actually part of the system of control mm. as as weird as as, as that mm. is. But but it is just kind of interesting, like going yeah. through it and you do start to see it where it's like you can be sincere. It's like, yeah, the, the bankers are evil, but it's like, we're so ironic that it's like hacky to say that. And yeah, you feel yeah, like yeah. a fucking guy on his soapbox, just even, even right. talking about that. Right. You know, right. You feel like, uh, did you ever go to those mics at under St. Mark's theater? No. Uh, well, the super late of, ones. Yeah. There were a lot of people like that. It was like a variety open mic. <laughs> yeah. 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 I know that it's like a seven minute mic that yeah. went to like 3 a.m. Yeah. And it was a lot of like, uh, <laughs> like 70 year old slam poets. Yeah. Yeah. They would yeah. Just, uh, get up and rant. And they it was nice stuff, though. Like, they give you your time. They gave you your time and they listened and they were, yeah, they were very receptive. That was like one of the good, the good places to perform actually when I was like brand new. But, um, yeah, people would say something about like, 9-11 was an inside job. And like, <laughs> yes. Hell yeah, it was. Yeah, 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 yeah. seven. Yeah, shoot, seven. shoot the power, son. Shoot yeah. the power. Yeah, what, yeah, what yeah. other things? So David Foster Wallace killed himself because he yeah. like went off his depressive meds and then he went back on and they didn't work. Yeah. And he wrote like a two page suicide note. And then I was like trying to Google because I was like, oh, I bet that's well written. Yeah. I'll bet that's a very smart. And then I found like one thing on Reddit. It's like, don't look for the suicide note, asshole. It was like. Uh, cause he wrote this suicide note to his wife who found the body yeah. and then she of course didn't publish the suicide note because a mm-hmm. bunch of gawkers would think it was 
some sort of poetic statement instead of uh, the uh, ravings of a deeply sick mind. Oh, mm-hmm. boy. <laughs> you can cut that. I just thought, I thought it was an interesting... No, it is interesting. No, it is interesting. Yeah. I mean, that is... If you write a suicide note, you, you, want you want to be read. To read you do think it, yeah. about, like, what, like, Sylvia Plath and, like, what I have read of Foster Wallace is very well written, so mm-hmm. I'm like... Okay, these suicide notes must be incredible, you know, mind blowing right, right. statements on the condition we all exist right. in. And yeah. it's like, no, it's just fucking sad, you know, people. Did you read Sylvia Platt's? Right. No. It's, all, it's always a first draft. <laughs> <laughs> you never get time to really get another set of eyes on it. Yeah. Yeah. No, I didn't, but it, it, you know, it's it's also just like she fucking killed herself with the kids in the next room. So it's like, yeah. well, it clearly. Was an oven, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. She put her head in the oven. Yeah, how? Fucking, how you even? I, I guess mean, it's the old, respect to a the old <laughs> real ass dude of the week. <laughs> you could kill yourself. <laughs> yeah, the old oven. You, you, you can kill, kill yourself. yourself yeah, it's like it, that's not. That doesn't sound like a quick death. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Is, it, is, bro- mar- is it broiling? Who is married to? By the way, who was Sylvia Platt's husband? There was who some, was the man fucking her? <laughs> it was some fucking was some English poet who Ted cheated Hughes? cheated on her a bunch. I think that's that's was him. It? I forget yeah. his name. <laughs> But he cheated on her a bunch, and he actually burned a bunch of her like letters and poetry and shit after she died, probably because mm-hmm. it was all about what an asshole he was. Right. Yeah, that's that's but, rough. Um, Burn yeah, it is yeah, Ted yeah. Hughes. Yeah. <laughs> Sylvia Plath sticking her head in the microwave. <laughs> <laughs> My husband comes home with... <laughs> With ice cream and doesn't <laughs> get me any. <laughs> didn't bring me any. And <laughs> she just burned that. <laughs> My husband farts in the bed and he knows that I'm trying to sleep. <laughs> oh, well, I guess I'll just throw this in the trash. You know, <laughs> nobody oh, wants the memories. <laughs> oh, the memories are way too painful. <laughs> my husband donated all my extra large clothes <laughs> <laughs> to some fucking church in East New York. <laughs> uh, yep, no one, uh, other things. No one yeah. needs to know about that. That's a th- that's the thing you got to do yourself too. You can't call a shred company to shred your <laughs> dead wife's. Poet laureate of the United Kingdom, so that means like the 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 country selects like a writer, to, right? To represent, yeah, sort of the voice of. They oh, do wow. that in the U.S. too. There's a poet laureate. Yeah, really. Mm-hmm. They should have a podcast laureate. <laughs> <laughs> it's just uh, Mark Maron. <laughs> yeah, it's just Mark <laughs> Maron. It's it's Mark Maron or Joe Rogan or maybe Phoebe. Yeah, maybe. Yeah. Hey, I'm the poet. I'm the podcaster laureate. Ah. Sponsored by stamps.com. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Awesome. Um, well, that bell it, means that it's uh, time to get into payday loans. <laughs> Is that what that bell means? Well, sorry. Yeah, one let's, one yeah. other thing before yeah, we please. wrap this out, because like essentially what happened and the actual mechanism for this is pretty complicated. But so Obama's administration makes the decision that they're going to let these foreclosures go through instead of buying mortgages. And it is interesting, like Obama had what was called a uh, troubled asset relief program was passed under Bush. They gave the government like $700 billion to buy assets from the banks to keep the bank stable. Mm-hmm. But the money expired with $300 billion of it unspent. So Obama, without any approval from the Senate, could have just spent $300 billion buying mortgages. And weirdly enough, John McCain, during one of the debates, proposed, I mentioned earlier in uh, Franklin Roosevelt, there was the Homeowners Loan Corporation. Mm -hmm. John McCain proposed spending $300 billion to make a new Homeowners Loan Corporation Mm -hmm. to buy mortgages. So (laughs) it's just one of those weird fucking things of history where it's like, you know, I mean, maybe McCain would start some fucking wars or something, but you have to imagine if like, almost 10 million foreclosures went through. Mm-hmm. Maybe Trump doesn't get elected if like 10 million people don't get kicked out of their fucking homes. Right. You know? Mm-hmm. So it's, it's, yeah. a, it's a weird thing in history. Yeah. But, but the other part that essentially the fraud comes in yeah. is that we were talking about chain of title, which is you have the deed, you have the mortgage note, you have to transfer it. Okay. So you put all these things into a mortgage backed security, which would be, you know, hundreds of different mortgages that's yeah. in an asset. And then you're supposed can to you, can you explain what a what a mortgage backed security is? Yeah. So basically you have um uh how- the podcast for fourth graders. <laughs> <laughs> You hey, everybody, are you a child? <laughs> Explain to me like I'm five yeah. or retarded. <laughs> yeah. yeah. How do you kill yourself with an oven? <laughs> <laughs> right. Wow, we got that some, real, good question, we got some the bottom of some really hard hitting. Uh, <laughs> really yeah. good question. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> 
But uh, so basically, uh, however many mortgages are put into one instrument, and then you can buy into this instrument, and then as everybody pays their mortgage, you get a, a percentage of that. Mm. So they'll have different tiers of this mortgage-backed security, like tier A is first to get repaid. And the idea is like if you put hundreds of mortgages, then even if a few default, you know, the people who are at the top are going to get repaid. They yeah. get however much percentage interest for buying this instrument. Okay. And so, but what happens is, of course, all of them in the these mortgage-backed securities default, so yeah. nobody gets repaid. Yeah. But essentially, to make these mortgage-backed securities, the banks take all these deeds and all these, um, or not the deeds, all these mortgage notes, mm -hmm. and they put them into the hands of one trustee, mm -hmm. and then the trustee is supposed to manage the mortgage-backed security. But the thing is, and again, this is get a little complicated, but it is important for property title law, this is going all the way back to England or early colonial United States, anytime you sell your house or transfer your property to somebody, you have to register it in the public registry. You know, you're supposed to be able to go to your county clerk or whatever and find a complete history of your property, everybody who's owned it throughout the entire history it's ex existed. Right. But the banks didn't really do this for a variety of reasons. So what would happen is like they would have these uh, mortgage notes and they set up their own internal system called a mortgage electronic registry survey. Mm -hmm. And they would bounce these ownerships back and forth between all these different banks without registering who actually owned the fucking thing, you know, transferring it with the county clerk every time you're supposed to actually transfer it, you know? Mm -hmm. And so what happens is this is why you have people for close, like multiple different people for closing on the same property or even people who paid all their bills getting foreclosed on because mortgage electronic registry systems is a black box. They're like, hey, we set up our system and we're going to have this person own the mortgage or however it might work, but we're not going to tell the county or whatever public registry every time we transfer it. So, you know, it bounces around and nobody knows what the fuck is going on except for the people within mortgage electronic registry systems. Mm -hmm. So when it actually comes time to kick people out of their houses, hundreds of years of property law have just been violated. So how do you kick people out of their houses? Mm -hmm. And then the solution they came up with was robo signing, backdating, document forgery, which was essentially you just mm -hmm. make up these fake documents out of thin air that are supposed to prove that you actually did follow the law here and mm -hmm. you did transfer the title properly according so to the law. So this is kind of like where the fraud happened. Yes. Yeah. And they did this on uh, millions of occasions. Uh -huh. Like, um, and so you know you have all these fake documents and the. What happens is they actually do, in 2012, the Obama Amendment does the uh, National Mortgage Settlement, which is like the banks pay X billion dollars and then it's all fine. But this was essentially a large-scale criminal immunization mm -hmm. because I think the estimates are from like 2006 to 2014, 9.2 or 9.3 million foreclosures. So, you know, almost 10 million, uh, by the end of Obama, 10 million people got foreclosed on. We don't know exactly how many of those were totally illegal. Or totally, they could, yeah. and totally they, fraudulent. Yeah, totally fraudulent. They had no legal standing to, to foreclose. Mm -hmm. And uh, and then we won't know because this national mortgage settlement in 2012 was just like, okay, pay X billion and you get to keep all the houses. Mm -hmm. and, Who gets uh, to keep the houses? The, 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 the banks, bank. okay. yeah. And like, oh. it was such a fucking insult where it's like, if you can demonstrate that you got illegally foreclosed on, you got a check for $1,480. That's a month's rent. Yeah. For losing your fucking four hundred, three hundred thousand dollar house. Wow. You know? And again, we don't know exactly how many were illegal, but the banks in the lead up actually did hire like um a private uh, a couple different private companies to look at like these mortgage backed security pools. Mm -hmm. And they were finding that in each of the samples, like fifty percent of the shit was just like completely fraudulent loans or, you know, definitely very uh um not on the level, essentially. Yeah, not on the, yeah, not yeah. On the up and up. Mm -hmm. All this stuff just makes me want to give money to a Hasidic man for the rest of my life. I mean, I don't need to buy a fucking house or, you know, like, all that shit. <laughs> Building Wealth is, like, for other people. It's not for right. me, you know? Even the stock market, I mean, I think I, we talked about that. I lost so much money in Canadian weed. <laughs> I mean. Now, yeah, I mean, it is, like, well, it's a scary thing where it's, like. Crypto. Yeah, yeah I lost it's a money in crypto. Yeah. Did you? 
a little bit. It's a shame that Jamie Dimon was right about crypto, <laughs> you know, because I, he was he gave some thought. He was like, "Don't invest in cryptocurrency. It's bad. It's no good." I was like, "What do you know? You, 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 you <laughs> fucking jerk. billionaire. You, yeah, you billionaire. <laughs> <laughs> fucking cheated people. He was one of the J.P. Morgan yeah. Chase was involved in the mortgage settlement. Yeah, yeah. But um, but yeah, I mean, it is something where you hear people talk about like, oh, the Trump administration, the rule of law is broken down. But it's like clearly. The mortgage settlement was, it's a scary thing because it's like, even if you own your house and you're on the level, if you're going up against multi-billion dollar financials, the law right. doesn't fucking matter. Yeah. yeah. You know, they will change. Like if the government intervenes. They have the best girl boss lawyers. <laughs> right. Exactly. <laughs> yeah. The government will settle with them. The government mm -hmm. will. And, you know, you can go into all the different things. Like they passed this law called Sarbanes-Oxley after Enron which is supposed to be if you do fraudulent financials, you get thrown in prison. Uh -huh. And then they have, you know, like Citigroup, Lehman Brothers, dead to rights on Sarbanes-Oxley. The executives are supposed to go to prison for 20 fucking years. Mm -hmm. No prosecutions. Yeah. So it's just something where it's like... Was that Kamala? <laughs> that refused it. To... <laughs> she well, did. She, she yeah. didn't prosecute Mnuchin, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. The, uh, the, the people below her at the California State Attorney General sent up a thing saying like, yeah, we found Mnuchin like robo-signing and doing a thousand violations, which was again, this fraudulent foreclosure, stealing people's homes mm -hmm. at least a thousand times. And we think we'll find more if we subpoena him. And then she's like, nah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, but he would go to like a nice prison, right? He wouldn't yeah, be probably. like in like the. He'd go to Oz. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, he doesn't need to like start lifting weights, prison, right? Um, I doubt it. White yeah, white prison I think that's where they all go. Yeah, like the Paul Manafort prison. Yeah, yeah. Um, I don't know. <laughs> that is funny. <laughs> Just to make an example out of him, that would be great if they could send him to right, Oz. Right. Yeah. Make him get a neck tattoo. Yeah. He like immediately adopts like a, a Hispanic act. <laughs> Yeah, he's got to join some kind of like <laughs> gang. Paul Manafort getting raped. Like this is for Suicide Squad. <laughs> yeah, yeah, because it's funny. Like when you're when you're sort of like outside of it. Like I mean, okay, I just I just have another dumb guy story. But when I worked at Got Junk, there was this guy that started working there. His name was Steve, and he like he bef he said before that he like towed cars and he repossessed cars. And he's like. Yeah, you know, usually when, like, some poor person gets, like, a... I mean, he didn't say poor person. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, dude, just pick whatever. Yeah, um... he, goes, <laughs> he goes, when some, you know, person... Yeah, they get a lawsuit and they buy a car and they can't make the payments. He's right. like, all the cars have GPS on them, so, like, mm -hmm. I just go and disable it and I bring the car back and I get 600 bucks. <laughs> and it's like, you you think that, like... I guess from a... For, like, as a layperson, you think that business involves all these like risks and stuff, and mm -hmm. but really it's just like you get to make money on the car, and then you get to take the car away and sell it again. Yeah, I mean, once you're essentially powerful enough, at least in the American system, and you know, I guess in the in a lot of developed countries, once you're powerful enough, you are essentially part of the government. I yeah. mean, that's the entire idea yeah, yeah. of too big to fail. Right, is like. You know, uh, the Obama administration couldn't let these people take losses because then they would have to nationalize them because mm -hmm. they would like say you do have the government uh, come in. Then all of a sudden they're losing the banks are losing all this money. What are you going to do? They're going to have to go bankrupt. So mm -hmm. it is just something where once you're a, a powerful enough business in the United States, you are part of the government and your 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 profits are guaranteed. Yeah. And that's because what you employ people and. You get subsidies. Yeah. I mean, I think it's just kind of a, a, a more direct corruption where there's a lot of different factors. There's campaign donations. Then there's the revolving door where it's like Obama, for example, is getting those $400,000 speeches to, to Wall Street after he leaves office. Um, Eric Holder, his attorney general, goes back to his uh, Wall Street defending law firm after he leaves office. So, mm -hmm. you know, you have like this payday baked into government service where it's like if yeah. you don't if you don't ruffle the feathers, you get to leave and get a million dollar a year do nothing job, you know? Right. Right. Shit. But Bernie Sanders has a lake house. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we shouldn't vote for him now. <laughs> yeah. Because of that specifically. Yeah. Um I heard he <laughs> what's it what's in those tax time? returns, you Jew? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Fucking <laughs> Well, Putin let me just, owns all his houses. <laughs> let me just ask you: Does that does that bother you at all? What the tax returns? Yeah, I think it's well. I think he should release his tax returns, but it's like I don't know if you've been on like Twitter today. It's like mm -hmm. people are being like they're getting really excited about it right away. Yeah, you know, it's like like he's over the deadline. It's like the the 
the first people haven't even voted. There hasn't been one debate. He has plenty of time to release his fucking taxes. Right. It's like mm-hmm. political leverage. Right. They're just, just trying they're just trying to make him look shady because mm-hmm. they want to throw everything at him to see what sticks because yeah. you can't argue with his policies. You have to discredit him. Also, who doesn't cheat on their taxes? <laughs> who doesn't try to pay as le- at least as little yeah, yeah. as possible? You're not I mean, cheating, yeah. you're not trying. I mean, yeah, I work too fucking hard. Okay? Come pry it out of my dead hands. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Come to my bunker. <laughs> Mr. Government, um, we gotta well, move on to these payday loans. Okay, yeah, so we so let's let's uh, yeah briefly, and I think this was good, and we should probably revisit this, um, you know, at some point. But uh, so Tim Geithner was Obama's Treasury Secretary, and he now he does good old payday loans, where uh, he's in the business of sending poor people a check, and they say, "Hey, this money's for you," and they cash it, they get the money, and then they have to they end up paying a uh, a lot. They end up paying a lot back. And it's like, the thing is, you know, you want to like... That'd be funny. You like do a partnership with like Facebook metadata to just Mm. see like who's posting about like their daughter in the hospital. Yeah. (laughs) And you just send them a fucking check. Yeah, you send them a check. Hey, dirtbag. Yeah, yeah, You probably need this. No, it's money. It's for you. (laughs) And it's through the mail. Because at least like, at least mafia loan sharks will like look you in the face and be like, if you can go anywhere else for this money, go there. Like don't... There, like I watched an interview with a loan shark one time and he was like, I always tell people, I'm like, you don't want to do business with me. It's going to be very <laughs> bad. You should only take this money <laughs> yeah, if yeah. you have no other option and you're completely desperate. <laughs> yeah. You know, and they're like, yeah, they're, they're, he's like, I've seen it work out, but I've also seen it not work out. They, yeah. they don't hire three black women to make commercials about how woke the Gambino family yeah, is. Right, exactly. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Yeah, oh there was God. a guy. Th- there's a guy that I know who I think he did. I don't know what family he was in, but he was he was like, yeah, you know, my uncle. When you owed him money, he would uh he would take in he would find out what hand you use so you could work, <laughs> <laughs> and he would t- he would take your opposite hand and he would uh, burn it with a blowtorch and dunk it in ice water and you'd never use that hand again. <laughs> <laughs> I give double handed hand jobs. Yeah, <laughs> right. you're ruining no. my business. <laughs> I play the piano. <laughs> I'm a concert pianist. <laughs> now I got to play the ukulele and <laughs> perform at the UCB. <laughs> <laughs> with my <laughs> oh, my capo ass hand, <laughs> the claw. <laughs> I think, I think, I think. Uh, yeah, never mind. Well, I was gonna. All right, I'll. I think Mullen did a bit one time about like, what if Louis C.K. jerked off in front of like day laborers? And he was like, I just want to play the ukulele and talk about eating pizza in bed. <laughs> Uh, um, yeah, the Godfather. Anyway, folks. Um, so uh, Geithner, uh, yeah. So he does. Okay, so I'm gonna look. I'm gonna look this up. This payday loan thing. I mean, essentially, look. I don't know that much about it. I think Matt was supposed to research this, and he dropped mm-hmm. the ball. No, no, but, I got the earning app. Oh, okay. I got that got earning app. You got the earning app. But let's start. Let's loan start shark with app. The, yeah. Alone. They should yeah. like you know it's too bad we won't see the Sopranos sequel where they run into the app doing their jobs. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. Where it's, it's taken <laughs> away. Fucking Polly. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> With my money, he's like, no, actually, I'm fine. I got this uh, app. Paul, they got a fucking app doing it now. <laughs> <laughs> Try yeah, to it, do sports do betting here. It is kind of funny to like think about an app destroying like this biz, all these businesses <laughs> that have been so successful for the last like 20 years or whatever. I like, think all these like payday loans. Yeah, just the mafia. Being completely out of business. Yeah, just fucking of <laughs> riddle. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Even like, uh, even <laughs> sex work is done. Yeah, by t- <laughs> Tony bro. trying to fuck his uh, therapist app. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. It's like no. It's like yeah. uh, Sylvia's like. It's like no one wants uh, real whores anymore. Tom. <laughs> no one wants to look at a real pair of tits. No, <laughs> they just want to fuck these robots. <laughs> I don't know, it's really hard. It's really hard nowadays. Yeah, you know things are changing. Um. Anyway, uh, so a way of monetizing how private equity firms make money offering loans to cash-strapped Americans. I'm just going to read a little bit of this article. Yeah, the check arrived out of the blue issue in his name for $1,200, a mailing from a consumer finance company. Stephen Huggins eyed it carefully. Guy <laughs> cashed the check. Now Stephen Huggins is giving hugs in jail. <laughs> He's in debtor's prison. Um, nice. Consumer he probably loans. got bullied for that last name. And then, <laughs> yeah, and then fucking the cycle continues. Yeah, there was a girl named Cummings in my, uh, in my. Uh, yeah, me too. High school. Yeah, you weren't gonna say Ashley that. Cummings. 
Nice. Uh, She's the one who made two broke girls, right? What's that? <laughs> she made two broke girls. Yeah. Yeah. And then she married a guy named Adam Slob on my knob. <laughs> so it got even worse. <laughs> um, but yeah, uh, it forces its collections with a busy legal operation funded in part by the con- customers themselves. Blah, blah, blah. Anyway, I mean, Matt, what do you, I mean, aside, oh, this is a long article. The Earning um, App or what? Yeah, aside from the, what, what do you know that's not about the Earning App? Um, oh, there's that Alan Jones guy. I don't know. I read like an article, but like it just seems like you could just be this huge fuck up, you know, and then, you know, you just copy a business that's already working, you know, like in Florida, there's all these payday loan Mm -hmm. stores. And then like this guy's like, whoa, I don't see those in the Midwest yet. And he just fucking (laughs) he borrows one hundred and fifty thousand dollars and he's like making millions in the next year. Yeah. yeah, whenever you're going through a neighborhood and you see a lot of payday lenders and liquor stores, that's when you tell your driver to go faster. Yeah. It's a bad sign. Yeah. But yeah, I mean, like payday lending essentially is like targeted towards low income communities. Mm-hmm. And like, I mean, one thing I looked up according to Time Magazine, like one study, more than 80% of payday loans uh, are rolled over into another within two weeks. Mm-hmm. So it's like, again, the entire business model, like we talked about earlier, is getting people in debt forever so that they're always repaying these things. Right, right. They're just like a battery you can draw from. <laughs> yeah, it's crazy. Why don't you fucking get off your ass and build something <laughs> or drive a truck or pick up some... Or make um, some porn. Yeah, make some make some homemade pornography. <laughs> Top five money-making apps. Wait, so what wh- what did you find, Matt? It, where did you, uh, it was on YouTube. So it's uh, you had the where's the laptop or whatever. Mm-hmm. Anyway, uh, it's just just I, earn an earn an app, uh, commercial, and it just like that whole like explanation video of how they make money is insane. Yeah, or commercial would work. Hi, we have a visitor. <laughs> hey, Deb. I'm hungry. Oh yeah, I'm hungry too. Hey, what else is new? Deb, Deb's hungry. <laughs> hey, Deb. Oh, does Deb, does Deb want to eat? <laughs> yes, I'm hungry. Is it over yet? It's going to be time. It's a 61 minutes. Deb cannot <laughs> stop putting food in her mouth. I think she's got an eating disorder. Oh, man. I think she has obesity. That's <laughs> that's why. Fucked up, dude. Yeah. First, first, the lending clo- or the All of her in- donating oh, wait, here clothes. Here it is. Here it is. Mm-hmm. Earn, an, earn an app, how it works. So, yeah, so the commercial, the commercial for this app... Earning, what the fuck is this? This is <laughs> this so fucking upsetting. shit. Bother, it's so fucking upsetting because it's all just like all these Instagram accounts that I follow. It's like just you know get out there and and grind. Yeah, earn a thousand. Here's how to make a thousand dollars a day. Unless you're stupid. Yeah. Unless you're a loser, don't be a scrub. You know, it's like you don't. If you want to have sex, you don't need that much money. Mm-hmm. I'm telling you, get a velour tracksuit, <laughs> learn a couple street jokes. <laughs> Women will fuck you. They will. Fu- they want to have sex. Okay, <laughs> it's not that hard. You don't need a ton of money. It's just pussy. Yeah, it's just a wet hole. Okay, absolutely. I mean, I saw this this thing on the. <laughs> there is this uh, post on one of the you know mindset Instagrams I follow. It said like. You know, having sex and having a girlfriend is common, but having a million dollars, that shit is epic. <laughs> and it was a picture of Tom Hardy. And it's like, you're you are essentially taking advantage of a retarded person by, <laughs> by posting this. Hey, you like, can Jesus be like this, Christ. dude. <laughs> Make an honest living like fucking Jesus so you wants got, you to. You got really mad at that Earn an App, right? Do you want to just play the commercial yeah, just like it. show Did everybody how it, con- confusing uh, it is? Yeah, Matt showed it to me. Yeah, yeah. I, I noticed a second thing in the viewing about the guy explaining the app. I'll, yeah. let, you, I'll let you okay, look so for this it. Is, so Matt found this video, but there's a commercial for it where they're like, uh, it's a, it's like a guy interviewing people and there's a lady getting gas and he's like, what are you doing? You don't have money. She's like, I got money with this app. <laughs> She's and like, I'm I'm buying gas. He's like, what are you doing shopping? What are you doing shopping? He's like, you don't get paid till Friday. He's like, nah, I got money. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 Right. And they're all um, black actors. No, they're mm-hmm. not. They're diverse. No, a lot of them. Yeah. Diverse. They're, they're trying to One's a white lady in a fedora. A white lady in a fedora. <laughs> right. Yeah. They're trying to mainstream these. Uh, payday like, lending, payday essentially. Lending, yeah. 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 All right. So here we go. This is Ern- earning how it works. Here we go. <laughs> So this is the iPad's fault, I'm pretty sure. Where's your other? Yeah, but um, can you here? Here you go. Here you go. Here you go. Here, here, here all go. of this time we work at our jobs in the hole. We're just kind of waiting to get paid. So exactly. why can't we just? 
it's kind of like a it's set up like uh you know there's like three young people youngish people at a coffee shop talking about you know paid after we do the work you know isn't that like what we're supposed to do that would be ideal well you use the earning app right yeah 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 yeah, yeah. Well, it's an app where you can actually use the money you have as you earn it. So how do they know that you worked eight hours? Well, there's a <laughs> microchip. <laughs> you sign up, you put a... Or 10 hours, and that this is how much money you were supposed to get paid. Okay. And so they give it to you. All right, so I'll explain it, right? Six kind of... So... And then they you also say in the commercial, they're the like, no fees. Kind of Sorry, what? Dude's paid. wearing a gold chain. He's wearing a massive gold <laughs> chain. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> That's so funny. It's like, what is it? <laughs> it's like, okay, let me tell you really sensible. Let me tell you a very sensible way to for you to get your cash once you have it. Okay, so basically, and it's just cut to him, and he's wearing a zebra. He's yeah, wearing he, a zebra. Uh, he's got a pimp coat. It's like a fucking thousand dollars. He's wearing a master. Yeah, a, a zebra hat from Red Dead. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, he's wearing a feathers, red feathers. It's just a fine suit. Yeah. You kind of imagine, like, I don't know, you go to Hollywood, you want to be an actor, like the next Denzel, and then you're like, yeah, I'll take this commercial where I get yeah. to, like, trap people in their fentanyl addiction. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Oh, okay. <laughs> Like no, it, this was a big deal for this guy. Too. He <laughs> went, had like two callbacks. Three thousand dollar check to and like booked it. <laughs> yeah. Fucking keep the liquor store open. <laughs> yeah. We were supposed to get paid. Okay. And so they give it to you. All right, so I'll explain it. Right? Six kind of. So you link your I bank studied account Shakespeare for this. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. When you get paid, how much you get paid, when you travel to and from work. Okay. It'll monitor your location, so it'll know you're actually at work. Oh. It'll know how long you're there and when you leave, and then your earnings will be entered into the earning app at the end of the day. That sounds pretty genius. So it's kind of I kind of wish I would have came up with that. Yeah, I, <laughs> so, I kind of wish I came up with payday loans. <laughs> <laughs> I kind of <laughs> wish I had thought of that. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Yeah, <laughs> I like how this shit knows your location if you owe them money. <laughs> yeah. Oh yeah, 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 yeah. Oh, I Did wish I thought of. I wish I thought of the Nigerian prince of fraud. <laughs> That's brilliant. <laughs> um, but so I guess like I, so they're they're selling it as like uh you know hey you don't get paid till Friday but you need the money and and you work today so it's yeah, like this yeah. okay so this app finds a way so let's say like you went to work today you know you worked twelve hours you made eighty seven dollars they're gonna g give you that. Mm -hmm. um, <laughs> <laughs> they're they're gonna put they're gonna give you that eighty seven dollars on Wednesday instead of Friday because because right. you, you need it now which kind of like I guess kind of I guess it makes sense. <laughs> but yeah it's it's okay. pretty cool it's user friendly it's not hard to use I can just use my fingerprints to verify nobody else can get into my account it's okay. not a password yeah. Yeah. and you know the beautiful thing about it also is like there are no fees you know the company okay. itself doesn't charge fees but to kind of keep the so whole system paying. going it relies on the community so okay. you get to pay it forward hmm. you know so you can tip for the next person and that person will tip for the next person and you know it, it's a system that kind of relies on itself you know it gives the power back to, to the, the community people. to the people who are actually earning the money <laughs> okay. you know and that's pretty cool but and it's not even earning it's i thought it was earn it like earn it it's earning there's no g on the end <laughs> yeah i was going to say fucking scumbags <laughs> They're like, oh yeah, do, well, yeah. The logo looks great. One more thing, uh, we're trying. Uh, can we can we uh, make that take that G <laughs> off so it sounds more urban? <laughs> yeah. What, what a bunch of fucking animals. Yeah, that's the kind of thing you think up at a fucking Silicon Valley health retreat while you're eating sheep's placenta or whatever. Yeah. The right. <laughs> yeah. 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 How do we yeah. take a regular old <laughs> predatory business and make it <laughs> fucking? Google. This world is so hey. sad. We should all be conscious. How does how does that guy who makes my Jamba juice speak? How would he <laughs> say earning? <laughs> earning. <laughs> it was originally called earning my boop. <laughs> but uh that was too. Yeah. It was called motherfucking earning. <laughs> yeah. It was, mo mo it was called earn. earning bills with a Z, <laughs> and they just changed it to earning. God, this sucks. But so, I, so like, I get there. I mean, obviously, they're hiding something. But they said that like the business model is just you can tip for the tip next person. Tip based earning, <laughs> yeah. You know who's not using that service because otherwise it would collapse com completely. Who? People that don't tip well. Yeah. <laughs> 
I but love then, the so, internet. So, the, so, so wait, so wait, so it must be connected to your paycheck, right? They must have some like right. bank. There's infra- something about that. You link your bank account you to it. You link your bank yeah. account yeah. to it. I was reading uh, comments that were saying like they'll accidentally charge your shit too early, and then oh. like you'll just get overdraft fees. accidentally. Mm. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. It just it seems so shady. It's like there's no business or app out there where it's like you get something for nothing. Like that's yeah. not how we should do a deep dive into it this works. too. So you uh, now that the comments. So you pay me out my paycheck, and I have to pay you back with my paycheck. You're not earning anything. This is just a fancy payday loan. Manny Lopez gets it. Um, I wonder if there's any. I mean, every comment is like set up for a dumbass. Uh, and then they said smart people manage and budget correctly. Yeah. Sounds too good to be true. This book put you in debt. This sounds a lot like credit. Uh, God damn it. Anyway, well, folks. Yeah. If you're poor, middle class, everybody's out to get you. So stick together, you know? N- Nipsey yeah. Hussle's last tweet is about, yeah, just start using the Earning app. Oh. <laughs> Fucking. Yeah, yeah, I thought Nipsey. Or it's against. <laughs> what if his last tweet was uh, about penis CK? <laughs> <laughs> that was pretty funny. <laughs> Kelsey Kane had him murked. <laughs> She's don't. They're right. throwing their weight around hey, in Hollywood, listen, man. Hey, listen, I'm not <laughs> That's saying, where the jobs are. I'm not saying it wasn't her. <laughs> okay, look, I'm not ruling out. <laughs> I'm not ruling out that <laughs> Penis CK <laughs> killed Nipsey Hussle. <laughs> <laughs> All right, sorry. All right, I think that's. I leave uh, that in, but I think that's where we should end. All right, that's that's great with me. Uh, Sean, where can we find you, guys? Please check out the Grub Stakers podcast. It's uh, it's really good. Yeah, they thank talk you. Talk about you know billionaires and economics, and they break down all the stuff that's uh, yeah too complicated <clears throat> for us Italians. Yeah, gr- gr- <laughs> uh, Grub Stakers podcast on SoundCloud. Um, we're gonna try and launch Patreon in May, so we'll see how that goes. But nice. uh, yeah, Grub nice. Stakers podcast, a uh, new billionaire every week, and we biography and profile them. Nice. Yeah. Well, when you launch Patreon, just get ready to be disappointed by a bunch of <laughs> fucking scumbags who cancel cancel their subscription when at like the 29th. Late. Yeah, Dude, the 29th. Dude, I've done that shit. Yeah, you fucking <laughs> but they, they, they <laughs> switched fucking ungrateful it. Animal. So you well, can great. charge... My listeners fund my show. <laughs> and it's like, yeah, awesome. Oh, I love to be beholden to you people. <laughs> fucking what? You can charge at the beginning of the month now if you wanted to. I just never... Oh. Brought that up. The, the same yeah. people who bitch about all how all your ad reads are scams. Are <laughs> yeah, the same yeah, people who yeah. fucking yeah, yeah, yeah. cancel on the 29th. Yeah, yeah. Hey, listen, thank you to all our Patreon subscribers. Yeah. I know. <laughs> I know we have a Patreon. Yeah, we have a Patreon. Yeah. If you want to, you know, if you want to kick us a little money, by the way, I know who the the good Patreon people are, you know? Yeah. You always, you always, you never. You're always out there commenting ne- and liking on the show. Yeah, y'all never let us down. Yeah, and uh, but you know, if you want, kick us a couple, a couple bucks on we Patreon. See you. you know, thank you. Kick us a couple bucks. You can cancel any time, and uh, you help out two artists. You know, mm-hmm. and uh, um. I think that's it. Grub, um, Grub Stakers podcast, and where else can they find you on Twitter? Yeah, any more uh, plugs? yeah, Twitter, but Sean P. McCarthy, Sean P. McCarthy dot com is my website, and that's links to my Twitter, and my Facebook. I'm mainly on Twitter now. Cool, nice. All right, I put all the links in the uh, episode description on iTunes, so if you click details, you should be able to find all those links. Uh-huh. Uh huh. Nice. Yeah. Thank you, and also, yeah, thanks for listening, and please what don't. It- what if what if this podcast was sponsored by a rival payday app? <laughs> we just wanted to get the dirt out on Ernan. Yeah, Hell yeah. yeah. <laughs> Honestly, yeah. if Ernan like wanted Folks. to run ads with us, we would want eighty and be like, We would Folks. be good. We would be good for that. Yeah, we really would. Now, folks, the app is making money. Listen. And you know they're good because they leave the G's in. <laughs> this is a trustworthy right. app. Right. They're not gonna they're condescend not... to you or treat you like you're stupid. <laughs> yeah. Oh man, Ernan. Oh boy. <laughs> making money <laughs> <laughs> all right well thanks for being um, here this is a lot of fun this is, this is right. one of the better episodes yeah. we did in a while I yeah think. it was yeah. fun we got to get people I, who I like know the stuff on yeah. more <laughs> for sure um, less dummies yeah and please remember um <clears throat> hey i'm also on twitch uh playing video games i've been playing Fortnite, and mm-hmm. if you have amazon prime mm-hmm. which is not a great company amazon but like uh you know you can kick me uh your free twitch subscription mm. yeah mm. and remember folks <laughs> We're not saying this definitely happened, but we're saying that maybe 
penis CK killed, <laughs> killed Nipsey Hussle. <laughs> Maybe. We're just speculating. Right. It, it looks like it's not, we're not ruling it out. All right. All right. Thanks for listening and bye bye. Thanks.